So here I've written for you a generic equation for the dissociation of an acid, HA. Uh, in this equation, HA uh, gives up its proton, gets picked up by water, and then water becomes hydronium ion, and we have then left over the basic form of the original acid molecule, the conjugate base. So I've written, there's the as acidic form, and there's the basic form of that original acid molecule. Let's try an example uh, of an acid that's very common, which is acetic acid. Acetic acid, the common ingredient in vinegar. It's got not one hydrogen, but th four hydrogens total. However, uh, many of you will recall it's this hydrogen that is the, um, uh, the one that can be dissociated, because that's a polar bond there. Okay, so we have here the acidic form of the molecule. And so for a generic acid HA, um, this is the acidic form. And I'm using a specific example of acetic acid. So what's the basic form of this molecule? It's acetate. So I'll call this A minus, and this is our basic form. So what I'd like to review for today is the relationship um, between the structure of the molecule and uh, the pH of the solution. So let's say that I have this molecule in different solutions. Uh, let's say that I could have a solution at a pH of 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then I'd see how the structure of the molecule changes uh, throughout these different pH values. Um, one thing that I need to know, though, is uh, how strong this acid is. So I need to know it's pKa. The pKa of acetic acid is about 5. And then I'd like to ask the question, you know, what is the ratio of the acidic form of the molecule to the basic form of the molecule? So we'll need to review some general chemistry before we move on. If you recall from general chemistry, uh, we know that the K of a reaction, the um, equilibrium constant, tells us the extent to which that reaction occurs. So if I have this HA, this generic acid, dissociate 100% of the time, my Ka is going to be large. And if the acid doesn't want to dissociate, um, the K will be fairly small. So the expression of the Ka is products over reactants. And the uh, acid dissociation constant um, leaves out the term water, which stays relatively constant. So if I rearrange this equation, I'll get the following. And then uh, the concentration of hydronium ion and acid and conjugate base, these are very small values, 10 to the minus um, 4, 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 7, typically uh, very small values. So um, rather than using those small numbers, uh, we usually use a um, logarithmic scale. So here I'll go ahead and take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, which is what we call pH. And then if I take the negative log of a Ka, I'll get the pKa. And then I'll take the negative log of HA over A minus, which then if I make it a positive log, then I flip these two here. And many of you will recognize this equation already. It is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And it's just derived simply from the, the Ka expression of an acid. So how do we use this equation to figure out um, the ratio of HA to A minus? So here's that ratio here. You might notice something special happens when the concentration of A minus equals the concentration of HA. And when they're equal, this term here turns into 1. A log of 1, this term, equals 0. And then we have the pH equals the pKa. So that makes it very convenient then in my little chart here that when the pH equals the pKa, I have an equal concentration for every acidic form of a molecule another one is in its basic form. So let's go ahead and fill that in. It's a one-to-one -one ratio at pH of 5. Now because this is a logarithmic scale, it's log base 10, that means for every uh, 
log unit, I have 10 times as many um, of one versus the other. So let's say that I um, decrease the pH, I make the solution more acidic, but I only decrease it by one pH unit. So I go from pH of 5 to pH of 4. So because I'm increasing the acidity by one pH unit, I'm going to increase the number of acid molecules by 10. So I have a 10 to 1 ratio here. Another thing I could do here is I could say, well, increase it some more. So if I have a pH of 3, I now have a 100 to 1 ratio. Okay, let's go the other way. What if I started with pH of 5, then I have a 1 to 1 because the pKa is 5. Um, now I want to make the solution more basic. So by increasing the base, um, I have a 1 to 10 ratio of acid to base, um, and I have then a 1 to 100 ratio if I increase the pH to 7. So that means that as a chemist, if I want to have this molecule in its basic form, what pH should I put it, what pH of the solution should I use? I would probably not want to use pH 5 because that's 50-50. pH of 6 is better, but 10 to 1 it really isn't that much. So as a chemist, I would prefer to use um, two pH units. So uh, pH of 7, that way I get mostly um, basic form over acidic. So uh, usually we look for that 100 to 1 ratio. So let's look for some patterns here. Um, one that I mentioned before is the special relationship that occurs right here, and that is that the pH equals the pKa with a 1 to 1 ratio, or 50-50. So now, uh, let's look at what happens um, when we decrease the pH. When the pH is less than the pKa, then we have the acidic form predominating. And when we have the pH greater than the pKa, we have the basic form predominating. So let's try some problems. For each of the following compounds shown in their acidic forms, write the form that will predominate in a solution of 5.5 pH. Go ahead and try this problem and pause it and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so what I've done is I've compared the pH to the pKa and uh, for part A, you can see the pH of 5.5 is greater than the pKa. So because the pH is greater, um, think of it as it's more basic. Uh, so it should be the basic form of the carboxylic acid. So in that case, it will be CH3COO minus. That's the structure. Okay, how about the next one? CH3, CH2, NH3 plus, it's protonated ethylamine. So we have um, the acidic form predominating, and it's already in its acidic form, so I don't have to write anything. Now notice that the pKa in part B here, uh, 11, uh, versus the pH, it's quite a difference here, 5.5 uh, um, units uh, in difference. So uh, we can be pretty m sure that most of the molecules are in their acidic form. However, in part A, notice how those values are actually very similar. We have a pKa of 4.76 and a pH of 5.5. So remember, when they're equal, we have a one-to-one -one ratio, the acidic form of the molecule to the basic form of the molecule. Um, here, it's not quite one-to-one. -one. Um, it's actually less than one pKa unit, though. So it's, some, it's somewhere between um, one-to-one -one and uh, one-to-ten in terms of the acidic to basic form. Um, well, what is it exactly then? Uh, can we calculate that? And the answer is yes. Um, you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate that. And I'll set it up for you. And you can try it and see if you can figure it out. So we've got the pH equals the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the basic form to the concentration of the acidic form. And so we've got the pH is 5.5, pKa is 4.76. And so if you want to know what that ratio is, uh, just solve for A minus over HA.